Back in the early 1950s, the SINPO Code first appeared under the CCIR, the Consultative Committee on International Radio, which was a forerunner to the current ITU, the International Telecommunications Union. You usually find the SINPO code appearing in a listener's reception report to an international shortwave broadcaster, and the code is often used when listeners post their loggings in places like shortwave listener Facebook groups and DX Club newsletters. But on many occasions, I see some misunderstandings in the way the numbers are compiled for the code. So let's take a closer look at the SINPO code. SINPO is an acronym for Signal Strength, Interference, Noise, Propagation Disturbance and Overall Reception. Each of the five components that make up SINPO are given a ranking from 1 being the worst case to 5 being the best. The S for Signal Strength is rated from 1, which is classed as barely audible, to 5, which is excellent. No... You can't have a signal strength of zero. Believe it or not, I have seen someone use zeros. So how do you judge whether the signal strength is strong, fair or weak? Well, obviously you can tell by just listening and comparing it to other signals you hear on the short wave bands. And you can use your receiver's S meter as a guide. But if local noise levels are high, then the S meter could possibly be giving a false reading based on the accompanying noise levels rather than on the actual signal itself. Which reminds me, one day I must do a video on S meters, how they work and how to interpret them. The I for interference is rated as 1 for extreme to 5 for nil, or no observed interference at all. And herein lies one of the problems associated with how we interpret some elements of SINPO. In some references on the subject, interference has been described as both interferences from other radio stations and man-made noise. For example, locally electrically produced static. Yet other sources put man-made interference in with the noise component. Personally, I've always considered the I, the interference component to refer to other transmitting stations impinging on the station that you are listening to at the time. This is the concept behind the amateur radio Q code known as QRM. When we listen to a certain station, sometimes we hear interference from another station on the same frequency or an adjacent frequency. This is of particular interest to broadcasters. It can be most helpful if the listener can identify the interfering station that he is hearing at his location. Interference from other broadcasters on the same or adjacent frequencies is something that can be changed or fixed with better spectrum management by the shortwave broadcasters. So feedback on that aspect of SINPO is of particular interest to the stations. Now let's have a look at the end part of the code, noise. Like interference, noise is rated from extreme to nil. So what type of noises are we talking about here? Well, strictly speaking, it is atmospheric noise. But as I pointed out a minute ago, we find some disagreement here about what constitutes noise. International broadcasters are well aware that atmospheric noise and local static will, will be usually present to varying degrees. This is just the, the nature of the medium known as shortwave radio. And there is really nothing that an international broadcaster can do about atmospheric static at the listener's location, except maybe transmit it on a different band or at a different time of the day. I tend to lump man-made noise in with the end component of SINPO mainly because it is so prevalent these days that it really needs to be defined differently from interference due to other radio stations. Man-made types of interference tend to be of a broad-banded nature, transmitting in an unintended manner across the frequency spectrum. This can include such noise or static interferences from switch mode power supplies, electrical appliances, power poles and, and other local sources. 
I have always considered these types of interferences as part of the component known as noise, or QRN, in the amateur Q code. Next we have P, which stands for propagation disturbance, and which largely includes degradation of the signal quality through various types of fading. For example, you can have flutter fading, which can often occur if a signal is traversing the polar regions, or long deep fades, or lighter shallow fading, and so on. Sometimes we see the P in SINPO replaced with the letter F for fading, which frankly for non-technical listeners is a much more relatable term. So SINFO rather than SINPO. And so we come to the O component in SINPO. This is where I see the most obvious confusion with the code. The overall quality of reception is calculated after taking into account the previous four reception components, that is the S, I, N and P. And it is rated from 1, which is unusable as a listenable signal, to 5, which is excellent, or of the highest possible quality, given the limitations of the shortwave medium. Although there is still widespread usage of SINPO throughout the shortwave listening fraternity, it is clear that many listeners are still not comfortable with how to use the code. Correct practice would dictate that a ranking on the overall component would not be higher than any number given to one or more of the other components. So if the lowest ranking of any of the components was, say, 3, then the overall ranking should not be higher than a 3. Yet we regularly see overall rankings not relating to the other components. Let's have a look at a few examples here. A SINPO of 42344. Here the listener reports that the interference is rated as 2, which stands for severe interference. Then it was combined with a 3 for a moderate level of noise. So under the circumstances, there is no way that the overall component should be given a 4, which stands for good overall reception. With all components taken into account, one would expect the overall reception to be, at best, probably a 2, which indicates poor reception because of the severe interference and the moderate noise levels. Here's another example, SINPO of 54323. Described here is a strong signal at the listener's location, some slight interference from other stations, but with moderate atmospheric or local noise and severe fading. Again, although the signal strength may have been very strong on this occasion, the combined presence of interference, noise and propagation disturbances would demand that this overall ranking be marked down to probably a 2 or poor reception. In fact, you would have to question the accuracy of this SINPO report of 54323 when the listener is claiming that the signal strength is excellent, but the fading on the signal is severe. <laughs> that just doesn't make sense. SINPO of 45444. Now on the surface, this appears to be a well-constructed SINPO rating. But this listener then wrote in his report that the reception was good with no atmospheric noise. So if there was no atmospheric noise, why did he give a rating of 4 for the noise component? SINPO of 55555. Five, five, five. Now there may be opportunities to give a station all fives, especially if it is China Radio International, who sometimes has a booming, laser-like, mile-wide signal. But on most occasions, there is at least some type of degradation to a reception. For example, it could be in the form of slight pulsating fading. So the opportunity to give all fives does not come along that often. What about a SINPO of 11111? If you are telling the station that it is all ones, then I don't know how you even heard the station if the signal strength was barely audible, while at the same time the interference was extreme, the noise level was extreme, and the propagation disturbances, or fading, were also extreme. So there are three problems I see with using SINPO code. Number one. Obviously, it is open to the subjective interpretation of the listener. 
one listener's idea of a good signal can be quite different from another listener. Number two, as I already mentioned, the interpretation of each component of the code, for example, the I, N, and P, can easily be confused by a non-technical listener. And number three, even the very definitions of the SINPO code can be unclear. So is it any wonder that, over the years, a few broadcasters have expressed frustration and confusion at the inaccuracy of some reception reports? It has even been suggested by a few listeners that some broadcasters look more kindly on higher SINPO ratings and hence are more likely to reward the listener with a QSL card. The SINPO rating you give will have no bearing on whether you get a QSL card. In fact, if you do artificially boost up the uh, SINPO rating, you are doing the station at this service by not accurately reporting how reception conditions really were at your location. Recently, in one of the Facebook forums, a listener posted that the reception from a particular station was only a fair level at best. Yet he decided to give the overall rating a 5 because he really liked the program that they were broadcasting at the time. SINPO is to be used for reporting reception conditions, not for indicating how much you enjoyed the program. Comments on programming are reserved for another part of the reception report. In recent times, some shortwave broadcasters have encouraged the use of the much simpler SIO code, that is, Signal, Interference and Overall Rating. Indeed, SIO is about all that is required for most situations. While most international broadcasters are familiar with the SINPO code, not all broadcasters prefer its use. For example, those stations offering a, a domestic service on shortwave, such as small South American or Asian broadcasters, the fully written out description of reception is much more easily understood and possibly more reliable. So these days, many experienced DXs provide both SINPO and a written description of the quality of the reception, so that when writing a reception report for an international broadcaster, let me suggest four things to consider here. Number one, you can use the SINPO code, but ensure that the overall rating relates correctly to the other four components that make up the code. Number two, you may prefer instead to use the somewhat easier SIO in place of SINPO, as it is the components of signal strength, interference, and overall quality that are the most important here. Number three, I also recommend that a written description of the reception quality be included in case the person reading your report is not familiar with SINPO. Four, try to provide feedback on the programs heard during your listening session. The station will thank you for it. The reporting of reception conditions is just one aspect of a well-constructed reception report. So in a future video, I'll look at other aspects that you should consider when submitting high-quality reports to shortwave broadcasters. Thanks for spending time watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel. 73, and good DXing to you all. Bye for now.